Hello, my name is Kareem Youssef, General Manager of AI Applications and Blockchain here at IBM, where we're focused on empowering customers with intelligent insights to transform how they operate and do work. I'm here today with Jack Dangerman, President at Esri, one of the largest international providers of GIS, that is Geographical Information System Software, and a longtime partner of IBM. Welcome, Jack. Well, thank you very much for inviting me, Karim. This is great. Well, Jack, as you well know, and I mean, I think this is true, all of us can attest to this, you know, this past year has really shown the importance of building sustainable and resilient businesses. And indeed, for many of our clients, it has all been about how can they accelerate their digital transformations. Now, here at IBM, we've been focused on helping to solve these critical issues around sustainability with technology like AI. And with our Call for Code program, we invite people from around the world to build solutions on our open source software and technology from both us and our ecosystem partners to address issues like climate change and racial justice, racial injustice. You know, it's a growing community of more than 400,000 problem solvers across 179 nations using tech for good. Which is why I'm so excited to announce today that Esri will be joining us, making its ArcGIS technology available for developers to use in their call for code solutions. Now, we here at IBM selected Esri as a partner because it's a world leader in location intelligence, playing a critical role in tracking the impact of climate change and consequential influence on water, food, and our environmental resources to community. So with that in mind, Jack, my first question is, please tell us a little bit more about your decision to partner with us and how it aligns with Esri's mission and values. Well, you know, you've been working at geographic information system technology for almost five decades, and this has involved IBM from time to time, uh, initially using mainframe computers and then workstations and then stepping it into the software domains like DB2 and, and more recently the analytics software tools. Uh, but I'm really very passionate about applying geographic and location intelligence and information systems at scale to the big problems. And I know that I know that you share this passion with me personally. That I mean, we are confronted with big problems. I mean, the climate change issue, the issues of how do we create sustainable cities, the issues about reaching racial equity across cities and across the world. These are these are things that are geographic in nature, for one thing, but also <laughs> ones that that I that I that I uh, I'm really you know my whole life has been focused around this. So. Mm -hmm. At scale, I really want to scale it up with, with you, Kareem, and with IBM, specifically with this whole developer challenge that you've laid out. Now, as, as you said, Jack, the, the name, it may be a little obvious in the name, Geographical Information System, but can you give a little bit more context on what really is GIS and most importantly, you know, what is the use of this technology in this context of call for code? You touched on this a little bit, but a little double click would be helpful. Well, we have about 10 million customers around the world and they make maps and they serve maps to, uh, I mean, a good example of it is the COVID map that was done by Johns Hopkins. It was served out and several trillion views of that map has been made. But generally speaking, our users build information systems about geographic stuff and they display it with maps and they do it with services, you know, providing routing services or analytic services uh, based on this platform. And where it really comes uh, alive for this conversation is historically we've built end user tools like desktop tools or server tools, but we've recently opened up the hood of our tools and made available as open APIs streaming services that developers can actually embed and build really cool apps with. So, I mean, there's a limited number of people that do GIS in the world, but I really feel like the geographic information system should power all kinds of applications, applications about dealing with drought or water or, uh, you know, creating efficiencies in cities and utilities, tracking who's using what resources, water, what's the climate like, what's the weather like, what's the air pollution like, what's going on in the oceans, what's going on in farming. So there's a world of problems and we have a relatively limited 
bandwidth of people that are actually working on them. So I'm really looking forward to working with you uh, at many levels and working with all the people that are listening here to figure out how they can geospatially enable <laughs> their applications, communicate better. I mean, just imagine a spreadsheet, like a spreadsheet of where all the deforestation is going on on the planet and compare that to a map. I mean, immediately you see where it's, where it's at. And so you can kick into action, you know, understanding precedes action. And we're all in the understanding business to support uh, this creative initiative that you've taken to empower the developer community with this amazing challenge. You know, that, you know, I love that notion of understanding precedes action. You know, as you know, we have been partnering together, as you've said repeatedly, and I think in our Maximo business, for example, which is yeah. all around asset management, so many of our clients work with um, ArcGIS working together. And you think about the problem of vegetation management. That's such a classic one in my mind in utilities where choosing where to optimally go to figure out which you know, trees to trim or grass to cut around transmission lines is a more complicated and actually ripe for cost optimization problem than people might think. Yes. You know, but logistics, me. logistics, you know, yeah. people are saying climate change. Well, uh, we want to decarbonize the, uh, uh, the economy. How do you do it? Well, yeah. you save, 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 create more and more and more efficiency and your whole strategy of, of the last several decades, just knowing you personally, has been about analytics yeah. to create understanding, to you know, uh, show the way. So geospatial analytics are part of that and location analytics are part of it. So I really want to inspire all the people that are listening here to sort of figure out that, ah, oh, man, I could embed that stuff and take it the additional mile. And also inspire them to communicate more effectively data-driven information so people understand it. And I already mentioned this COVID uh, challenge, you know, that we were faced a year ago and how maps really changed the world's view, helped us understand uh, what's going on. It was like a big wave that nobody believed in the beginning. Today, we're still struggling. I spoke with President Obama. He was describing how climate change is the biggest initiative just last week that he's drilling into. But uh, he also says that Right behind climate change is the uh, non-understanding by the population. Still 35% don't even believe that it exists. So uh, this big wave following COVID, the wave of climate, and then the wave of biodiversity and the wave of all the consequences of these, these pandemics globally are going to be, uh, uh, they need to be understood by us. So and, uh, yeah. that, and that's mapping, us, you know? <laughs> that's mapping, no, and it brings us all back to this notion of our technologies and technology uh, uh, you know, stacks that we've built on. And, and if you may, I'd love for you to comment, for everyone to hear a bit about you know, the evolution of this ongoing partnership that we've enjoyed at IBM. As I mentioned, yes. we have our maximal clients work with ArcGIS. We're leveraging within our Tririgo portfolio your indoor mapping capabilities. Yes, right. And you have been committing to our Red Hat um, OpenShift stack, like yes. all of us have been doing. So can you reflect a bit on the evolution of this partnership? It's been a long journey with IBM, as you said at the beginning. Well, starting with me as a kid at Harvard, I was working on the IBM machine and you know, once a day I would get a, <laughs> a turnaround. Uh, but once we started the business, this was in 69, we were also using the university computer center to be able to make maps and do analytics on projects. Mm -hmm. Then we moved into many computers with the RS 6000s, the AS 400s, and we made our tools work on those platforms, which touched you know, uh, thousands of IBM users around the world. And then uh, later, as you began to get in the analytics uh, business uh, with Watson and so on, hooking up between your uh, AI and machine learning sorts of technologies, we wanted to geospatially enable them. And that has been you know, back and forth, back and forth evolving. The, the latest thrust into moving into the cloud, particularly with an open cloud where you can actually build a stack of applications on top of uh, you know, your Red Hat and open environment. We actually tested our Kubernetes implementation of our servo technology on, on your stack. And it was really, uh, I, I would just say, I really wanna thank you for it because it allowed us to you know, make mistakes over these last couple of years. 
But our idea is really to scale up GO2 to massive scales. Uh, this means uh, everything from uh, imagery analytics to uh, big data problem solving, uh, things like uh, running the logistics for truck routing companies for the whole country in real time, you know, and we're doing that already. But this latest generation of tools that you're providing, I mean, your whole open strategy of being able to support on-prem uh, cloud implementations is exciting to me because, uh, yes, you're in the cloud business and also you're in the open cloud business, which means I don't have to do as much work as a developer. I can, you know, layer on top of your stuff and it just moves right along. But yeah, it's it's becoming pervasive, you know, maps through browsers, maps in little devices, uh, maps and analytics in these devices sort of at the edge of uh, the cloud environments. So yes, I, uh, we've been evolving along with you. I mean, we're a little yeah. bit behind always on the hardware curve with the, the technologies uh, cutting the edge, but uh, this, this last big jump of opening up the services with open APIs, with open source uh, technologies that can grab our uh, content, like the living atlas of the world, and mm -hmm. also our capabilities for doing these rather sophisticated, complicated space-time problems is uh, very exciting to me. Well, you know, look, Jack, first of all, thank you again for your partnership and your support, because, you know, as you said, there are real problems out there to be solved. And as you and I well know, you know, our technology is the means to the end. Solving these problems is the end we're all well aligned on. Yeah. And you know, one, one, one thing I'd like to say is that right now, uh, <laughs> when I was a kid, we never could get enough computing power. We actually have enough now. When I was a kid, we never could get enough data, but with remote sensing and GPS and sensor technology, the IoT, we now have enough data. That's when true. I was a kid, we had to write all of our own software, but now what's emerging is software as a service and pass so that uh, now, now what's missing are creative people that can take this infrastructure, all these layers of content and computing and software, and build creative solutions that address the big challenges that we're facing as a planet. I totally agree. And so really, if you're one of those out there listening, right, one of those creative people, one of those who want to tap in in many ways to the power of this technology and that we are providing, you know, you go to developer.ibm.com slash call for code and uh, bring your game, you know. Let's change, <laughs> let's change the world together, one, code yeah. line, one line of code at a time. And Kareem and I will be behind you, I promise you. <laughs> All the way. Thank All you the way. again, Jack. Thank you to you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you to Esri. Cheers. Appreciate it so much. Mm -hmm.